This is Controller Structure, episode 140 for Dollar Sign Date, which I think was February 6th, 2018. Big week to everyone listening. This show has notes. Visit thenexus.tv slash CS140 to see them. I'm your host, Stephen Orvis, and with me is the other host, Andrew Billy. Hi, Andrew. It's great to be here. <coughs> it's great to be here. <laughs> Glad you could make it. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, stuff has been happening. Stuff has been happening. So, uh, like, raspberry? 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 Raspberry! Still no neighbors. <laughs> Still no neighbors. Uh, so, IoT done right. Serve for yourself. Uh, apparently, the Mozilla Foundation is creating uh, software that runs on your Raspberry Pi to act as a... Uh, a cloud server for you, so now your uh, IoT server can be on-premise, and you can write your own plugins for it and integrate your own stuff, or test out virtual stuff, or what have you there. It's actually a pretty neat UI. You install it to your Raspberry Pi, and you plug in these uh, USB adapters that let you hook up to smart devices. Then you can write uh, like flows, more like click instead of write uh, flows. You can uh, configure them, and so certain things, if one thing turns on, then that could turn something else on or off, or whatever have you. Uh, you have uh, switches you can put into place and different things like that. And it all runs from your Raspberry Pi internally, and they do have a, uh, a ISP set up with a DNS. So the ISP is probably the wrong word. The DNS set up on their, uh, their, their website where you can forward to your, your local computer, your network as well if you wish to. Uh, or you can set it up yourself through your own website. But that's neat too. So that lets you connect from the outside in, but you're not dependent upon them. If Mozilla goes offline, your server keeps going. And it's open, you can write your own plugins and things for that. So I thought that was really neat. Probably something to be playing with here soon. Get out of the not my cloud stuff and my cloud. <laughs> uh, so other things you can do through Raspberry Pi, you can uh, block ads on your network with it by using Pi-hole. Pi-hole basically acts as a DNS inside of your network uh, that all of your computers hook up to, and when it asks for the domain name of a uh, adver- node advertiser, it goes ahead and sends you to no place. And so that effectively means when you load a web page and it's like, hey, can I do whatever it is, click ads or something like that, dot com, and... Uh, it just goes to local host yeah, or something. Yeah, it's like, oh, hey, here's the stuff you asked for, it's nothing. And so, of course, now your, your n- internet's more faster for all of your devices, and, uh, you mean your internet is just faster, not more faster. More faster? <laughs> can it be more faster? No, it can just be faster. Okay, if it can just be faster. Anyways, it can be even faster. It can be even faster? Okay, it can be even faster. <laughs> <laughs> it can be even faster uh, and now without loading as many ads. Of course, it's basically what Adblock does, uh, probably a little bit what OpenDNS does anyways. But anyways, I thought there was neat. This is a thing you can run on yours and... Uh, the thing that got me, though, was the GUI for it looked pretty cool. It kind of gives you nice stat- statistics of kind of what's been blocked and, like, traffic and things. Probably more customizations on it you could do, I imagine. Uh, so I thought that was a neat blanket solution yeah. for your network to set things up. Yeah. Sorry. The GUI. Yeah, sorry there. I had to be a little Chrisist. A little Chrisist. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. <laughs> I, I have heard of Piehole before, um, although it's, you know, essentially... You know, intercepting DNS requests. Mm-hmm. So, like, you don't need to do a man in the middle HTTPS kind of thing. Yeah. So that's that's good. And uh, let's see. Uh, so yeah, I tend to do this uh, in other ways. Uh, but what I like to do is uh, block the Windows 10 telemetry domains. Ah, oh, there you go. Uh, and I Stop do that it from phone and home. Yeah, and I do that directly on my uh, router. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, so it's there's a lot of different ways to do it. It was just cool that someone's put together a solution. Specifically, the GUI looked kind of nice, and nice GUIs yeah. are nice. And uh, I kind of like the name. Pi-hole. <laughs> yeah. So um, we need to issue a correction. Remember that uh, a ballistic missile alert from Hawaii? Yes, yes, that's the one where the employee got confused and accidentally clicked on the wrong... Wrong menu item because the GUI was confusing. Well, apparently that's fake news. Uh, because the employee that pushed the button legitimately thought that it was real. So, uh, apparently it was uh, like a, a shift change going on. And the 
like one of the managers there, uh, I, I'm, let's say I, I've completely forgotten if it was the one coming in or the one uh, going out that decided, oh, let's do a drill. And even though the message said, you know, this is, uh, you know, or rather this is a drill, uh, like apparently, uh, you know, they, whoever it was that pushed the button really didn't, uh, you know, hear that uh, because it was just a taped recording. Mm -hmm. You know, despite the fact that, you know, it was prefaced by, you know, this is, uh, you know, this is a drill, this is a test or whatever. The actual message still contained, this is not a drill. Which seems a little conflictory, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so... The, which one is it? <laughs> so, apparently, this individual has been problematic and has been canned. I thought he was still under uh, review. Remember, or, they just weren't releasing his name. There's some sort of investigation going yeah. on, I thought. Okay, so... I got the feeling they didn't actually release him yet. It's just that they're going through the official process yeah. and channels because he was... Uh, potentially uh, disputing yeah. this. Yeah. Following standard procedures, the night shift supervisor posed as a U.S. Pacific command official and played a message to the emergency workers warning them of a fake threat. The message included the phrase, exercise, 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 the FCC report said, but it also included the, this is not a drill language used for real alerts. The worker who then sent the real alert to the public said he did not hear part of the message declaring that it was an exercise. The employee declined to be interviewed by investigators, but he did provide a written statement. So, authorities in Hawaii defended not releasing the fired employee's explanation earlier. So, yeah, apparently he was fired. Ah, okay, there you go. You know, and if, you know, if I know my bureaucracy procedures well enough... If he wasn't fired, he would be placed on unpaid administrative leave. Quite likely. So, uh, it seems like the Bitcoin bubble might be popping. Uh, after Newegg and Steam stopped accepting Bitcoin, Stripe, which is uh, like a well-known uh, credit card processor, uh, has stopped uh, doing Bitcoin as well. So, you know, and uh, let's see... I'm not sure how low it's gotten, you know, because it's declined by over half since its peak. Uh, as of recording, Bitcoin is seven thousand five hundred fifty-four dollars, mm. which is way down from its almost twenty thousand dollar peak, uh, maybe a month and a half ago. It's so, getting getting down there pretty low. Yeah, and as you can see here, like all of the coins have like sunk a mm. lot. So someone someplace still made a lot of money. Yeah. So hopefully that means the uh, GPU uh, market will not be as uh, inflated. <laughs> yes. So like I was, uh, in fact, I was just looking on eBay the other day, and it looked like you know someone had dumped their. I don't know, 20 or so GTX 1080 Ti's. Well, that's interesting. That's true, because if Bitcoins go down and people don't think they're coming back up, they might start selling their money so, and stuff. Well, of course, you know, you need to keep in mind that Bitcoin is not actually mined on GPUs. Uh, other coins are mined on GPUs, which are then exchanged for Bitcoin or real money or what have you. Okay. For some reason, I thought that Bitcoin was mined on GPUs. Uh... Way back in the olden days, it was. Okay, maybe that's the days I'm remembering it. Yeah, from. yeah, but that hasn't been the case for, like, at least five years, I'd say. Okay, yeah. so I, I'm pretty sure I was mining it more than five years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, as mentioned, it's, you know, just kind of dropped like a rock, and uh, it's no longer a stable unit of value. Uh, so, you know, as of, you know, recently... The uh, stock market has kind of been going down just a little bit. Uh, gold is doing fairly well, uh, but not Bitcoin. So the, how should I say, the assertions that it is digital go gold uh, aren't holding true. Iffy, yeah. Yep. So can you tell us about LibreOffice? So they released uh, 6.0 here. I... And uh, one of the interesting things I found about it was apparently they have this uh, LibreOffice Online uh, version. 
It seems to be a little sparse as the details. They have a Docker image, which was cool. I tried pulling it from the Docker Hub, and it didn't really pull it down. And I tried uh, building the Docker file myself on my machine, and that had some error message. So it seems like there's not a polish solution. And from reading the short article about it, uh, it kind of seemed like uh, it wasn't really a polished solution, even in the editor. If it was working, it's kind of more of a basic proof of concept, but still a neat thing. It might be worth looking into some more at another point in time. Yeah, it looks like the uh, the logo is a lot colorful now. Like it has uh, colored transparent blocks or whatever. So, yeah. And it's pretty safe to say that OpenOffice is kind of dead. <laughs> Yes, that's it been has, a while since they forked. Yeah, again, I'd say it's probably been over five years now. So, AMD has posted a profit uh, in 2017. Uh, so, this is like the first time in six years that it has posted a profit. Uh, $201 million uh, worth. Uh, so, I'm not exactly sure how deep in the hole they are, like as in debt and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, there's pretty much one word, Ryzen. Mm Mm-hmm. That's positive news for them. Yeah. Uh, So, let's see. I forget how it was phrased. Like, uh, if AMD performed well for quarter one, two, and three of 2017, it positively crushed quarter four. So, yeah, I think it's... Yeah, they mentioned that... They have like another Instagram of revenue, you know, another billion dollars worth. Kind of, kind of helps. It's good to see that they're they're doing well because that keeps them in the in the running and competing. That way, we don't lose them as a competitor. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of, uh, I'm not sure, uh, large sums of money. Uh, you remember Xerox? You know, they kind of pioneered a lot of stuff with that Alto thing. I, I remember they had the famous uh, uh, phrase, uh, Xerox that, and apparently that made to photocopy things from the, the years gone by. Yeah. So, uh, apparently, they've not been doing too well uh, recently. So, they've been bought out by Fujifilm, you know, the uh, Japanese camera company. Yes, um, I have a camera for them, actually. Yes, for 6.1 Instagrams, billion dollars, that is. You know, they've bought all of Xerox, which, you know, for an uh, office supply company, I'm not exactly sure how that would, you know, fit in as terms of, you know, would it actually be a good value or not? Apparently, way back when, uh, Fujifilm and Xerox had a joint venture, uh, mostly to sell Xerox machines in, like, you know, the Asia, like, the Eastern Asia region. Uh, apparently, they're like, hey, would you like to buy the rest of us out? <laughs> so there was something about debt or something there. Did they have to go into debt to purchase them? Uh, let's see. Probably. Yeah, two companies said that Fuji Xerox will buy back uh, the stake from Fujifilm for around $6.1 billion using bank debt. So Fujifilm will use those proceeds to purchase 50.1% of new Xerox shares. Don't think they uh, specifically mentioned how far in, like how much they had to borrow for it. Going from Fujifilm to Firefox, uh, Firefox, the next version, will start strip, will start to strip query strings and paths uh, from referrers. So, you know, that little header that, you know, browsers send back whenever, like, say, an image was included on the web page or, uh, like, whenever you click a link to go to another page, it'll send, oh, here's where I came from. So if you're sitting on your your profile page from your from your uh, insurance company and you have like your name up and it has like your social security number and the query string to help identify you in their system, uh, then that would be, be up there in the, the URL, something like that. Yeah. It'll be right in the header there mm. for, uh, you know, anything to see. Uh, so consider this example, you know, www.healthcare.gov slash, you know, C plans, whatever, uh, uh, question mark, county, equals some number, age equals 40, smoker equals one, 
pregnant equals one, zip equals like some zip, state equals Arizona, income equals 35,000. So yeah, just from that query string, you can gather what could be a lot of very sensitive data. Yes. So uh, let's see, it won't do this by default. You have to enable, uh, let's see, I think was it tracking protection? Uh, which is probably enabled by uh, you know privacy or like so yeah private private browsing mode. Um, so yeah. So the thing I was wondering about this is why is it only private browsing mode? It feels like something you'd actually want to be in in place like a lot of the time. Yeah, which uh, having this having that mode on all the time would probably be a good idea. So yeah, starting with Firefox 59, private browsing will remove path information for referrer browsers sent to third parties. Uh, a setting of referrer policy of strict origin when cross origin. In the previous examples, the setting would remove path and query string data from referrer values. So they are stripped down to say healthcare.gov or reddit.com. Like doesn't exactly say like, specific page like way way inside or anything so we made this change only after first ensuring that this would only have minimal to no effect on web usability so mr shiagrion uh i probably murdered his name but <laughs> he's he's the guy who is the chairman of mpeg which is the video standards group uh, so, like, MPEG-2, that's, like, the DVD format. MPEG-4 is, uh, uh, AVC, which is what, you know, Blu-rays use, what pretty much most video on the internet uses nowadays. Uh, th those people. So, this guy laments the coming failure of high-efficiency video coding due to, uh, legal uncertainty in the face of the Alliance for Open Media, which, you know, I said a mouthful there, but, you know, let's break this all out for a little bit. In 2013, MPEG approved the High Efficiency Video Codec Standard, which provides the same quality as advanced video coding at half the bitrate. The licensing situation is depicted by the picture below. There are three patent pools, one of which has not published their license, and a significant number of patent holders who have not joined any pool and have not published their licenses either. The Alliance for Open Media, or AOM, has occupied the void created by MPEG's outdated video compression standard, AVC, uh, absence of competitive Option 1 standards, IVC, and unusable and a unusable modern standard, which is the high-efficiency video one. Uh, AOM's AV1 codec, due to be released soon, is claimed to perform better than HVEC and will be offered royalty-free. Situation can be described as tragic. This does not mean that there is nothing left to do. I personally doubt that something will be done, though, seeing as how blindfolded the industry is. As I like to say, God blinds those he wants to lose. <laughs> Which, I kind of like that last sentence. Yeah, that's, that's true. So, um, yeah, I haven't uh, seen any of this uh, AV1 uh, test footage, but uh, I'm pretty sure we'll be talking about it when it releases. So, um, now for something uh, from way back when. Uh, when chasing down a... Uh, so, Raymond Chen, which is... I'm, I'm guessing he might be an architect, uh, or at least like some senior programmer at uh, Microsoft, uh, said, when chasing down a bug, I ran across this comment. Arbitrary cap on message length. If you change the format string, then update this to match. Although, if we ever needed to place a million icons on the desktop, I am going to quit and become a barista. Ha <laughs> ha! The buffer was not big enough, so I suggest you check your local Starbucks. <laughs> so, uh, the thing is, is that this format string was percent %f 3.3, comma, percent %f 3.3. Uh, 
So Raymond uh, muses that they never looked at the resulting log file because the string format is wrong. Uh, for an icon at position 10, 10, the resulting log message is 10.0000003.3, 10.0000003.3. So, you know, that's because the format string percent %f3.3 is interpreted as a formatted floating point number with a default of six places after the decimal, then literally 3.3. The format string was probably intended to be percent %3.3f, which means a floating, uh, which means a formatted number with a minimum of three characters of output and exactly three places after the decimal, which would result in 10.000, 10.000. So, yeah, test your string formats. You know, look at the log files or whatever. Or don't threaten to quit and become a barista. So, yeah, I thought that was a little entertaining there. It's always interesting seeing what all happens to be in uh, in in code comments. Yes. That's some good stuff in there. So, uh, that seems to be it. Uh, so, if you would like to uh, submit feedback to the show, uh, we'll go ahead and read it on the show, uh, unless you ask us not to. Uh, go ahead and do that uh, with the feedback form on the nexus.tv. There's a link conveniently below our pretty faces. And don't forget that today is International Backup Awareness Day, so back up all your stuff. Have a good one. Have a good one.